ride height, drive line angles. So what I've done is I originally I had set to oh, about four inches clearance in the front and, and four and a quarter in the rear. I, I wanted a little higher. Um, the roads that I drive on, I live out in the country, um, they're fairly bumpy. Um, so yeah, I want a little bit more ground clearance. So what I've set it at, I set the front at four and a half and I've set the rear at five. That gives me good tire clearance. Um, yeah, and just a little bit more. But obviously what that has done is thrown the pinion angle and the operating angles and the drive line out of whack. Um, I've got it about as good as I can get it right now for this ride height. Um, and inputting numbers into the calculator, my next step is to remove some shims from the rear transmission mount. There are shims in there. I think you can see these. Let's see if I can. Maybe better on that side. Yeah, there you go. So right here are the shims. They're in there. They're quarter inch, and there's three of them in there. And then I also put a washer underneath. So I'm thinking I can lose one of those, bring the tail of this down. That will lower this part of the drive shaft down and get me back to where I need to be operating angles and pinion. So I'm going to try to do that without taking the entire transmission bracketry apart down there. I also have this drive shaft loop that's in here which is attached to there. You can see the bolts for that down there. Um, but I think I can slide on on undo these bolts that actually hold the mount to the transmission that go through the spacers. I think there's enough room down there to slide those down, uh, gently jack the tranny up, and slide a spacer out. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I can get my hand down in there, so we'll see. If not, then I have to put the car back up on jack stands and uh, take the transmission support bracket and all that stuff out. I really don't want to do that if I don't have to. So. so this is the uh, online operating angle calculator. This one's on spicerparts.com. Uh, there's a few on there. You can get an app for your phone too and do it on there. Anyway, so select the number of shafts, one there. My current uh, angle of the engine is sloped down 1.78 degrees. The drive shaft is sloped down. 1.66 degrees and the rear end is sloped up 0.23 degrees and then hit calculate all right so as you can see over here that gives me the operating angle one of 0.12 and the operating angle two of 1.89 so this either operating angle has to be above 0.5 uh, maximum of three so we don't violate the maximum there but the first operating angle is not 0.5 so that's no good the pinion is the difference between the two so that gives us, oh, what is that, 1.77 
opinion, and that's got to be within one degree, so that's no bueno either. So what I need to do because of the increased ride height is I need to increase this angle here. So by doing so, we'll lower this angle and allow me to increase this angle slightly. So let's say I go, uh, let's go 2.4, so we'll add about half a degree there. You can see that brings us closer and that will lower this. Let's say that that brings it down to one and we're pretty much where we need to be. Increase that just a little bit. See if we're good. Yeah. So that's about what I'm shooting for. So for the up and down, just think of think of this pen as each component. So here's the engine forward front of the car to, will be to my left. So if the front part of the component is sloping down towards the rear of the car, then that's going to be down, right? So the engine is negative 1.78 at the moment, so that'll be down. The drive shaft is also pointing down, and the rear end is opposite this way, so that's pointing it up. So yeah, here's the other rear transmission mount bolt. I got the right side out. This is the left side. And these won't come out all the way with this transmission bracket in here. But I think they'll drop down enough. And then I'll just lightly jack the transmission up to uh Flip one of those out. I'm hoping. I'm also going to have to loosen up the side pipes at the headers because they're going to want to rotate just a little bit. I don't want to put any pressure on that. So. jacked up at the moment. This will give me a little, little bit of clearance underneath here. Alright, there it goes. So after pulling the shim out, I'm at negative 1.95 degrees on the engine which helped substantially with the drive shaft I'm now at 0.18 upslope on the uh, drive shaft and my rear end is 0.34 degrees down so this is better but it's still not in um, so what I need to do is lower the rear end just a little bit, not lower, um, rotate the rear end a little bit with the three link. So here's the bar for the three link. I just need to shorten that bar, which will rotate the axle there. So 
That's what I'm getting ready to do. Let's turn it from back here. Opposite threads on this one end. Get how I got it last time. Oh. Clown show. Who's that guy? Oh. Lock nuts are loose. Then we want to shorten that rod just a little bit. Not the same as I did last time. Right about there. And then we'll lock that down. Put the wheel back on. Bring it down and check it. So drive shaft, you can see 0.83 tilted down. And we'll call it 0.82. which is much better so now we'll check the rear end and what I did the first time I disconnected the drive shaft that went right by the flange with this second time I did it or actually when I was doing the first one I also checked it at two bolts on the diff cover in the back 
with a bar across them and it was very close to the same as on the flange so that's how I've been doing it this time so I just got this little little bar here that's magnetic put it on there and go between two bolts on the rear diff I'll show you that I'll get the camera in there I don't know it's a lot easier than disconnecting the drive shaft to get on the flange and if the readings are the same I'm fine with it sorry for bouncing me around there Oh, that's showing 89.38, which is 0.62 down. So that's good. Yep, we'll go. Yeah, it's actually a little. Call it 0.64. Yep. GoPro stop recording. All right, so we're back at our drive line calculator. We've got one shaft, the drive member, which is the engine. We're going to go. That was a 1.95. That will be sloped down because it's higher in the front than it is in the rear. The drive shaft, we're going to go 0.82. That's also down because it's higher in the front than it is in the rear. And then the rear end will be opposite. And that angle was 0.64. Calculate results. That gives us the front operating angle of 1.13, the rear at 1.46. So the difference, which is the pinion, will be 0.33, which is within one. So that's good. So let me write these numbers down 1.13, 1.43. Called pinion 0.33. So our operating angles are at least 5.5 degrees here and here. We are within one degree on the pinion. Difference between these two is 0.33, and our maximum operating angles are 3 degrees, and we're within there. So that's where it needs to be. Um, the engine, I did not show how I measured that. I just have a, a about a six inch steel bar and I just laid it across the crank pulley and measured it that way. That's the easiest way. Good to go, man.